there came a point where I felt like I was a burden and that people would be happier if I wasn't there. Born with a rare congenital defect, Sarah Kovac learned to let go and let God use her weakness to show his strength. I grew up feeling like there was something wrong with me and that why didn't God heal me because I knew that he could and like I was doing something wrong. And um, he chose to heal a different part of me that, that really needed it more than my body. Next on Life Today. Oh boy, thank you so much. Hey, y'all are great. And we welcome you to life today. I'm James Robinson. Betty and I are thrilled to have one of the most beautiful ladies I have ever seen. And, and, and look at this. This is called, this is Sarah Kovac. You're going to meet her in a few minutes, but I'm going to show you a little clip of her uh, before you actually meet her sitting here with us. But it's called Incapable Arms. And you'll notice she seems to have small arms, but they don't uh, function well, I tell you what, let's just, let me show you a miracle and then you're going to get to hear the miracle of love and grace and just the beauty of God and wonderful parents and a beautiful person that will inspire you. Take a look. Okay. Quit your kicking. Going so fast. <laughs> okay. But now, it's getting to where we can basically just give him some oatmeal in the morning and a couple bottles during the day, and then I nurse him at night and he sleeps all night long because he's the best baby ever. All situated. Uh. How about welcoming Sarah Kovac to life today? Sarah, I love you. I love you too. That is so neat. Well, thank you. Now, did it take you a while to get to where you could change that, that diaper the way you did that? I mean, I... I'm still working on it, I think. <laughs> I'm on the second kid and I still fiddle with it. <laughs> All right, tell us, because when you talk about incapable arms, you're talking about arms that don't function the way we would think they should, and yet you are in very capable arms. Mm -hmm. You're living a life embraced by grace in the arms of God. And I told you when we were visiting before we came out here, the glow and glory of God's on you. You're a beautiful girl, but your countenance really does reveal Jesus. If you ever wonder sometimes, what does Jesus look like? That's what Jesus looks like. <laughs> and you can have that look of Jesus that she has on her, but only if it's the real Jesus. By the way, you'll see a lot of people who'll be in church, they try to look spiritual. <laughs> And it's kind of spooky. <laughs> but then you can see some people that just the glory of God's on you. Now, what is it? What's the, what's the challenge? What's the disease? Uh, okay, it's arthrogryposis multiplex congenita. And wow. I would like you to spell that. If you you, you need to be charismatic to even yeah. understand that. <laughs> us, us plain folks call it AMC. <laughs> That's and, and so you were born that way? Yes. Uh, yep. And something wasn't right when I was in my mom's womb and I wasn't moving correctly for some reason, and, and for some people, the reason is different than others, but uh, my muscles just weren't getting worked out, and my joints weren't moving, so when I was born, they continued to, to be underdeveloped and small. How did they handle it, mom and dad? Well, I, I, the, my memories are a little vague of that time, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, they weren't, uh, they weren't following Christ at that time. Uh, they had just gotten married and uh, just knew really nothing about being parents and let alone being parent to a child with a disability, but God really just 
swept in and his grace was there. And even, it's kind of funny because they moved in with my grandmother, Grace, and she was a huge influence on keeping their marriage together and, and praying for them and leading them the way that they needed to go. So, I mean, it's a whole, it's, it's a whole book in and of itself. <laughs> and you cover the story though, you tell the journey. When you, what do you want people to hear? Well, I grew up in the church. We started attending church when I was two. And it was during the whole more charismatic era. And I, I, I grew up feeling like there was something wrong with me and that why didn't God heal me? Because I knew that he could and like I was doing something wrong. You were healing, you were hearing about God being a healer. Right. Which and he, he is. is. And he, he definitely is. Absolutely. Is. No question about it. Absolutely. Um, he chose to heal a different part of me mm -hmm. that, that really needed it more than my body. And it took me so long to figure that out. And I was so angry for the longest time. And I knew that God didn't make me this way. That, you know, we live in a fallen world and things aren't perfect. And that's just how I am. But I didn't know who to be angry at. You know, I'm the one statistic that you think you're never going to be. The one in 3,000 that ends up with a disability. I was angry <laughs> and I didn't know who to be angry at. And um, as I wrote my story, which was written through countless tears at five in the morning before my son would wake up, I'd get up and go in my office and type. And yeah, I type with my feet, <laughs> um, but I'd type and, and the things that I had to work through when I wrote this book, it, it was a huge healing thing for me of itself. But I started to notice a pattern and it, it looked to me like grief. I had studied some psychology in college. I really enjoy that. But I thought, this sounds like the, the stages of grief that I'm, that I'm writing. And so I went to a counselor and she said, well, yeah, you know, it looks different on different people. And it's not always a, a swift journey through, you know, beginning to end. And this is the first stage and this is your fifth. And now you've completed and here's your certificate. You're done grieving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, I just, I, I want what I, I want people to go through my book and feel okay about reaching into those places that hurt. And there are journaling places in there to ask questions to help. But look at your story and be willing to allow God to use it and be willing to cry through it and be willing to grieve through it. And, and that's not all. I mean, that sounds like my book's really dark. It's not, it's not all like that. But um, I, I just want my reader to be able to be vulnerable with themselves and with God. Who, who you can't hide anything from anyway. Well, do you talk, uh, mention in your book some of the challenges that you have had throughout and how God has walked you through those challenges mm -hmm. in different ways? Yeah, and especially one of the most difficult things that I had to write through was in junior high, I, I struggled with suicidal thoughts. I felt I, I had isolated myself. You know, I can't blame anybody else for that. I felt different, so I acted different and I pulled away. And there came a point where I felt like I was a burden and that people would be happier if I wasn't there. And, you know, I can't say that God dropped a neon sign from heaven, you know, to tell me it's going to be fine. But he had put me in a place where there were people who loved me around me. And I was in a, a Christian school and the teachers, you know, the teachers there, even though I didn't get along with the other students and I felt isolated, the teachers there were so supportive. And I had these parents and friends that loved me. And in so many ways, he spoke to me through no words at all, just the, the love around me to pull me through those times. You, you had a lot of decisions that you had to make. I mean, you faced fear. You did, isn't that right? Sure. That, that was a big issue with her. Tell us about that. Tell us some of the things that you faced and decisions you had to make. Well, of all the things that I've had to face and had issues with, it, the hardest thing has been just my own insecurity. Um, you know, there's the physical things are difficult, but w when you isolate yourself or you, you keep reminding yourself how different you are or you, you know, there's just, there's, having children has brought me to face a lot of my struggles that I didn't want, have to before that. For an example, I have to I have to go out in public and struggle in front of people to just deal, handle the children. Mm -hmm. And struggle is a daily thing for me. It's not uh, it's not uncomfortable for me, but it's uncomfortable for other people to watch, which makes me uncomfortable because I know they're uncomfortable. <laughs> Do people come over and try to help you? Oh yes. And, and are many of them quite helpful? Sometimes, <laughs> like I said, I mean they'll 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 make my life go faster if somebody helps me. But most things, I can figure it out if I, if I am given the time. Um, 
and usually it's other people that are feeling uncomfortable about the time it's taking me to accomplish this thing. So if I, if I let them do it, a lot of the time, it's just because I'm trying to be you know, gracious sure. and, and considerate to them because it's making them comfortable. And, and it's, it's good to help other people, and that's what God called us to do. So I don't want to rob them of that. But then sometimes I want to. <laughs> sure. Sometimes I want to do it myself. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you don't know what they're thinking. That's part right. of the dilemma. You don't right. know what's going on, and you don't want to annoy people. That's probably part of why you thought, well, maybe I'd be better if I wasn't here. Uh, I may be absolutely. a burden. Absolutely. Yeah. And people, yeah. they want to be helpful. You right. Know? And if they see someone struggling, I don't care what, what, what it is, they want to reach out and help. Sometimes they don't know how to. And it's just like with our right. children. Sometimes as our children were growing up, I wanted to help or do something for him, and yet I knew I needed to stand back and allow them to do it or make the mistake or whatever, and that's hard to do. Exactly, and I think, uh, you know, in the back of my book, I interviewed my parents because they have such a, they have such an amazing story themselves, but when I look back and see how they raised me, and in my Kindergarten year, I think it was, I broke my arm four times just from falling because they don't bend. So anytime I could fall down, yeah. I would break something or I would smash my face up because I couldn't catch myself. But they let me get rollerblades. They let me ride a bike. You know, I mean, they, <laughs> these were things that I wanted to do, normal yeah. children things. And I cannot imagine what was going through my mother's <laughs> mind as I, I mean, not that she wasn't right to do it. I'm just saying I would have to leave the city, you know, to, I, I couldn't, you know, now that I have kids, I, I my son was like two and a half before he ever had a Band-Aid because <laughs> I, I hover. <laughs> and and uh, I, don't know how, I don't know how she did it, but I, I, and my father too, but I'm so glad you know, that they had the strength to do nothing sometimes. Yeah. You and know? your mother's taking care of your little one right now yes. back at the hotel while you're here. Yes, yeah, she's... She, Thanks, Mom. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mom. Good. <laughs> she's a great grandma. Not a great grandma. She's, I mean, she's a yeah, wonderful grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Tough enough to be a grandparent, you know. I, I really pray that you give Sarah an opportunity to bless you with the book. I really do pray that. And and when you go into churches, and there's her website that you can see on the screen, what do you try to communicate to them? Like you stand up in front of an audience. Mm -hmm. What what is going to be the the message? I mean, what what are you going to do? Somebody says, "Okay, if you come to our church, what what's God going to use you to do for us?" You know, they're nice if they admit they might need something. You know, that's the start <laughs> for a church. I think there's a need for us to understand that we don't have to carry it all, and and that's that is the message of my book. And that's at this point in my life, that's what God's teaching me and using me to teach others is that. You know, we want to be everything that, that we can be, and we want to be everything that our loved ones need from us, but we are going to fail mm -hmm. because we're human and because this is a fallen world and we're not perfect and the world around us isn't perfect, but it's okay because I can hold my son at night and it's a, it's a miracle that he's comfortable in my arms. I, it, doesn't, it doesn't escape me that that's, that's a miracle, or my new daughter. Mm -hmm. um, how do, you, how do you pick them up and get them into your lap? How do you how do you work that? Well, I I, <laughs> I am. They had me in therapy when I was little, but I've, I'm a flunky <laughs> because they they kicked me out because I cheated. <laughs> <laughs> they were trying to teach me certain ways to do things, use my hands more, and I didn't like it. So you know they would get a phone call and I'd finish up whatever activity was faster, cheat, you know, walk up and. Do the thing. I'm supposed to throw something in a bucket, and I would just scoop them up and run up and dump them in the bucket and tell them I, I finished. You know, <laughs> um, uh, but so because we didn't do that or do as much of it as they recommended, my joints are locked in place, curved under, which gives me perfect little hooks to pick up my children. Okay. Um, but if the if the doctors would have had their way and we would have done the right amount of of training and stretching, my hands would be straight, and I don't know how I would have picked up my children. So I'm glad I was a little bit rebellious <laughs> as a child. <laughs>